Before this video starts, I want to say thank you so much for clicking on it. A portion of what I make on this video and my other video, I'm donating to a whole adoption agency. It is the agency my mom went through to get me. So thank you so much just by watching this video. It's helping other little boys and girls in other countries. This is going to make me cry. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> I know, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't wanna cry. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Hi. This is my mom. Hi. Adoptive mom. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of you guys wanna know her opinion on the subject and everything like that. I wanna say before this even starts, I've done a lot more research. I have watched almost I think all of Without a Crystal Ball's videos on this subject. I'm a lot more educated than I was in the last video. So I know that some of you guys said that I wasn't that educated. I wasn't in that video, but now I am. Um, and I will link uh, Without a Crystal Ball down below. So if you want to check it out, she does a very good job of explaining everything that is going on. I am not going to tell the story again, because if you're watching this video, you probably already know it. Uh, we're just here to get my mom's input and everything like that. Was there anything that changed from the time that I watched the videos. I mean, you said now they're under investigation. Okay, but that, but nothing with the basic story has changed that would change my mind about anything. No. Okay. I mean, it's said they, they can't find him like the police like can't find him. Also, if you're new here, thank you so much to all the new subscribers. Wow, thank you so so much. Also, I didn't really realize how that video was gonna do. Um, it almost has like 20,000 views now. My mom knows pretty much the whole story. I'm just gonna let her take over for this portion of the video. Um, Alex brought this to my attention. And of course, being the mother of an adopted child from China. So she showed that to me. And then I had her show me some additional videos that other people had posted about it so I could get some more information about it. Um, so I just felt that, you know, having an adopted child from China, um, um, it made me very interested in the topic and I did really feel like it was heartbreaking. Um, some things they said about, you know, China not being totally honest about things. I can, I can vouch that that was partially true. When I was adopting um, for Alex, there were certain requirements to adopt and you had to meet certain criteria to be on their healthy baby list. I had applied for the healthy baby list and um, when we picked Alex up and picked up the other babies at the orphanage that were within our group, um, I would say that most of them had some kinds of issues that I maybe would not have put them on that healthy baby list. Um, I guess healthy has a broad range of definitions evidently. Some of the girls did have some issues. Um, Alex was one of them. Alex was um, a year old and probably was developed uh, physically um, like a six month old. So it did take her quite some time to catch up to where she would have been had she been, you know, born in the United States to a family and been taken care of and not been in an orphanage, laying in a bed probably all by herself, not getting any attention for an entire year. So that in itself is heartbreaking. And then to think of a child with special needs that may have been in that same situation and then adopted and then re-abandoned and I can't believe that people are using the terminology rehomed. Uh, rehomed to me is what you do with a pet. They gave their child up who had already been adopted. They gave that child up for adoption because they couldn't handle that child. Um, when I adopted, I, I knew that, you know, we, there may be issues because when you adopt, just like when you have a baby yourself, you do not know how that baby is going to turn out. So we did not know um, what Alex was going to be like when we got her. When I got her um, at the orphanage, she did something that I was not aware that it even had a name. It's called the Orphanage Rock. And evidently for babies that are in an orphanage that um, are not getting any attention and need to have a way to soothe themselves or um, comfort themselves if they've been hurt or they're hungry, um, they learn in the orphanage that crying and doesn't really get them anywhere. So it took Alex a very long time to even cry for I would say several weeks she sat and I'll do my little imitation if you don't mind me doing here's Go my ahead. imitation of Alex um, fresh from the orphanage Alex would sit and she would chew her clothes and rock back and forth and make noise so she would go <laughs> really yes oh gosh yes so, sometimes I feel like doing that today so, <laughs> with everything so that, going on so that let us let us know right away that she was going to have some issues. We didn't know what they were. We didn't know if she was going to be autistic. We didn't know, but we could tell right then the first night she was in my hotel room 
that there were going to be issues with her and she was not as far along developed as we thought she was going to be and might in fact have some other issues that would need to be addressed. And I was on the healthy baby list. These other yes. people wanted a child with special needs. <laughs> so All right. Just... I got back to the hotel that night. I did call my family doctor who also happened to be uh, my best friend. And I called her and I said, listen, I don't know what this is because she is just rocking. I can't get her attention. She doesn't make eye contact when I try to feed her. Um, I've got a little bowl of cereal and I have to beat on the side of that bowl with the spoon to even ha get her attention to have her look up. She's totally withdrawn. Sometimes um, I'm still that way. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Get your attention. Uh. You know, I, w I was concerned back then, and that has been some time ago, once you left the orphanage, that baby was yours. Just like when you leave the hospital and you have a baby, that baby is yours. It comes out of your body. It belongs to you, whatever the issues are. Mm -hmm. And in China, when you leave that orphanage and you take that baby, that is your baby. So I knew at that point that whatever was gonna have to happen with Alex, that I would provide that. My entire family pitching in, everybody helped Alex in one way or another. We had a very good friend who was a pretty well-known child psychologist in Columbus. That, oh, really? Mm -hmm, that sent some, one of her people oh. over to do a total evaluation of Alex and basically said, you know, she appears to be physically healthy. She's just really far behind develop, developmentally. Um, so she's going to have to have a lot of help learning. To, she doesn't crawl. Um, she doesn't stand up. She has lower body, doesn't have much muscle mass. So we're gonna have to, we're just gonna have to work on that. This is gonna make me cry. <laughs> oh no! I know. Here I don't, don't want to. I don't want to cry. Um, but they gave us um, some advice, and that advice was every day counts. So every single day she made progress, and I just I can't imagine taking this child from an orphanage where the child had been abandoned. Who knows how this other little boy had been abandoned, but oftentimes in China, they're either abandoned in the woods or on the side of the road. Alex was left, as far as we know, in a cardboard box at an intersection. So you take a child who's already been abandoned once and then you abandon them again. I can't even imagine. And, you know, I read all, I didn't know anything about adopting. I didn't know anyone who was adopted. I didn't. She also had to be a certain age. I talked about that in my last Yes, video. you had to be a certain age to adopt mm -hmm. at that point. But I, nobody in my family was adopted. I didn't know anything about adoption. Who knows what kinds of attachment disorders they could potentially have. The son... Huxley did have attachment issues. Yeah, I, I you know, I had so. seen things on like 60 Minutes and things like that about families that had children that they had adopted and they had this detachment or attachment disorder, mm -hmm. um, or they were even their own children that had that disorder, um, or, you know, adopted children that, you know, required counseling because they didn't understand why they were abandoned, and, you know, feeling like their birth family didn't want them and there was something wrong with them because they had been adopted. To think that a child could possibly have that kind of issue along with being a special needs child, being adopted, being an Asian child in a white family yes. is also another issue. So you have to be prepared for that, that there may be issues. In my case, being a little older than the average mommy for uh, children Alex's age, you know, I'd have like little kids asking me if I was a grandma which was always very delightful. <laughs> there were a lot of things to consider, but the one thing I never, ever, ever considered was trying to send her back <laughs> or rehome her with another family. Return. I didn't even want anyone else to look after Alex. I wanted to be there every minute of every day to see when she started eating solid food. When did she take her first step? When, you know, when did she say her first word? All of those things that were milestones that were easy probably for other kids were not that easy for Alex. And I can't even imagine being a, having a special needs child that had already gone through all this trauma, you know, being abandoned, being adopted, being in a Caucasian family, and then to be rehomed and to not have that family that you had already become attached to. You know, I know they said they gave, you know, all kinds of therapies and things. Well. I gave therapies too, and I understand that the things that, you know, were 
you know, seemed to be deficient in Alex at the time were fairly easy things to fix, but it took over time to do that. And it wasn't a, a super easy thing to do. So I can't even imagine how hard it would have been for a child with some severe issues. When you sign up intentionally for special needs and then you can't handle those special needs, especially from... And she was a nurse. She was a nurse, okay. I didn't see that in the no, video, she didn't but see that in the video. she was a nurse, evidently. Yeah, there's and also there's they, other stuff about they that. They had gotten advice from a doctor to not go through with the adoption because you do receive information, at least we did 20 something years ago. You got a sheet of paper that told you information about that child. Um, maybe some of it was exactly correct, maybe some of it wasn't. There were different, at that point in time, different levels of lists that you could be on. So there was the healthy baby list and there was the um, slight, um, I don't know what they called a slight impairment or something, light special needs, and then there were um, heavy physical needs like you know a heart murmur or maybe a cleft palate or something that would require surgery so there were different lists that you could that you basically could choose from i want to be on this list or this list overall my reaction to this whole thing was i i can't believe that anyone would do that to their child not only because it's just their child but because this child has already gone through so much trauma in their lives and just having gone through just a smidgen of that with alex I can't even imagine um, what what they what they did. So I have some comments. Okay. This is um, some of your comments that you okay. left on my last video. So good to hear your perspective. I think the adoption agency should bear some responsibility for their inability to sus suspect maybe this couple's immaturity and plastic personas. People say that they did it for the views. You only have to listen to Micah, the woman, for 30 seconds to see that she lives in La La Land. Should the adoption agency should have screened them better? Like, what do, what do you think? Should they have asked, what do you do for a living? So they know that they're putting their kids online, their biological kids even? I think they probably would have, at least. Yeah, they should have to we disclose, adopted, right? When I adopted Alex, mm -hmm. you had to put together an entire dossier to be sent to China for them to look through that and to select a child from amongst their all of their orphanages um, to select that child for you. The adoption agency is going to be different than the government of China. They would have worked with an adoption agency here that works with the government. Oh. So the adoption agency here, their job is to work as a liaison between you and the Chinese government. They probably knew all of that. I mean, I had to fill out where I work, um, you know, where you work, where you play, information about your house, your family, how you were raised. You had to almost write an essay on your entire family. So they did go into a lot of detail at that point in time. So I don't know if that's changed, but I felt like the person that did my home study, that that person almost became like my sister by the time we were finished with the process because that person knew me so well and had spent so much time with me. So I don't know, but I also know that it's their job to find a placement for a child. If you meet the requirements of that country, then their job is really is not to say, ah, eh, you're too fake, you shouldn't, be a, you shouldn't be a mother, because that fake mother is probably a better mother than they have in an orphanage in China, if they don't That's have anyone. Point. So, you know, fakeness, you know, having them online. I don't know what they told them. Obviously they do some investigations, so they probably knew they put their kids online. Um, but you know, that's kind of how things are here. A lot of people do that. And from the videos I saw, I mean, I couldn't really tell if she was plastic I, because the parts that I saw, she was like crying and I thought that felt a little fake, but I, I really, I'm not, I'm not a fan of hers. I'm not a subscriber to her <laughs> account. So I don't know okay. what she's like normally. So I really don't know, but I would imagine she looks pretty Pretty, pretty fun and nice when she's doing her other videos. Probably, yeah. I mean, she has a lot of subscribers, so mm -hmm. they probably appeared to be very nice people, and they may be very nice people in a very bad situation. You are a credit to your parents. They both did a fantastic job. Why, thank you. <laughs> 
Also, Micah was a nurse for years. We just kind of touched on that. A nurse certainly would have had more experience than I had <laughs> um, in dealing with a child with special needs or you know additional needs above and beyond what a child normally would have. How old was he when he was adopted? He was, I believe, two. Okay. Yeah, because he's four now. Okay. And they've had him for like okay, about. Okay, that's right. Just they wondering. have four bio children. She gave up on Huxley around having her biological baby. Fans and people that followed them closely say that she kind of withdrew from Huxley because of this new baby. It seemed to be a very interesting timing of those events that all of a sudden she has a brand new baby, which takes up a lot of time. An infant does take up a lot of your time. Yep. And honestly, I can't imagine having four children. So I would not have adopted him in the first place already <laughs> having children oh my because gosh. I can't imagine having to handle that many children on my own mm -hmm without having assistance because I know how many of it, it, it does take a village. And I know how many of us it took um, just with Alex. So I can't imagine have, having that many kids. I wouldn't have adopted in the first place. And then I definitely would not have gotten pregnant while I was trying to deal with um, a special needs child if I was having that many problems. I just heard about this a few days ago and honestly thought of you. I wondered what your take on it would be. My jaw literally dropped when I saw a video about it initially. I am the oldest of four girls. My mother was a single mom who had a very hard time raising us, so she gave my younger three up for adoption. It's a very long story, but suffice Suffice. Suffice to say, <laughs> my bad, <laughs> reading's not my forte. <laughs> Suffice to say, adoption plays a significant role in my life. I believe a trust fund should be set up for Huxley with a significant amount of money they made from his adoption blogs slash sponsored content slash brand deals and any future book deals. He needs an attorney or some type of legal advocate that can look out for him because he has been heavily exploited. This just hurts my heart so much. There are so many people who want to raise a child so badly they already had kids to begin with. Alex, I would love to hear what your moms have to say about this. Lastly, I'd like to know what their YouTube friends think about all of this rehome stupidness. <laughs> That's a very good comment. That is. So, oops. As <laughs> oh, knock over the camera. I won't be invited back. Um, um, about so the exploit ex exploiting. Exploiting. Okay. Uh, all I have to say about that is, if YouTube had been a thing when we adopted <laughs> Alex, I would be a millionaire by now. <laughs> I would be sipping a Mai Tai on the beach in Tahiti. <laughs> Um, she was such a wonderful little child and we had so much fun with her and it was so much fun watching her develop and we could have made a lot of money then. But I also do believe if you're in the entertainment business, there are laws that protect children. That's what everyone um, wants YouTube to do. Right. Because, like um, there's a thing called a Coogan account mm -hmm. and this was because of, um, an actor whose parents took all of his money when he was a kid and basically left him with nothing. So there are laws that protect children who are in the entertainment business and a certain percentage of their money has to go into this Coogan account in order to protect them. Mm -hmm. So I think if a child is on YouTube, I think that counts as entertainment just because it's not now, it's not a TV show per se or a movie. I do think it counts as entertainment. I think that's an excellent idea. To set up a trust fund. He should have some kind of trust fund. He should have an attorney. Maybe he should have some kind of guardian appointed by the court uh, to make sure that you know his finances are kept in order, especially since he's special needs. Whoever has adopted him uh, for this his second forever family, they will probably need some kind of additional support financially. If he has a lot of medical bills, I don't know exactly what all of his issues are, but um, he probably would need that. So I think that's a very good. Um, a very good idea to do that. And I do think that they should, um, especially if what I have heard and I have seen their subscribers and their views, everything just went skyrocketed when they started this adoption journey. So it was all based on adopting him. The husband also has a channel where he cleans cars that has like nine, hundred thousand subscribers okay. so well cleaning his cards is fine that's yeah. his and yeah. Huxley had nothing to do with that, with that although, yeah. although although one could say Huxley was a good advertisement for the entire family correct so all of their channels 
benefited from, from his that. adoption. Yep. I also have a few other questions. My first question for you, Sherry, is what do you think about them duct taping Huxley's thumb to get him to stop sucking his thumb, but their biological kids, they did not do that? Um, I don't really know a lot about that. Um, I know that you were a thumb sucker. Yep. And I didn't never had braces either, so yeah, my teeth aren't really that bad. We, we just decided that kids normally don't go to college and suck their thumbs. <laughs> And so that eventually peer pressure would make you stop. And it did. But I don't know. I mean, he has special needs. Yeah. So I don't know what his ability is to reason. So they may not have had any way to actually reason with him, get him to stop sucking his thumb. Although I would hope there would have been some other kind of method other than duct taping it. That seems kind of icky. Um, a lot of people will put... Like a guard. Some, they yeah, had a guard on it one time. A guard but, um, on the thumb or maybe put something on it that the child doesn't like. So when they put it in their mouth, it tastes terrible. They don't want to do that again. My second question is, um, what do you think about them putting Huxley's meltdowns kind of like online and stuff? I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of all for... Um, like education. Education but and still complete transparency. Just, yeah. Maybe if they had put more of that stuff online people would not have such harsh opinion. Um, the only thing when I saw those meltdowns online, the only thing that I didn't really like about it was their response to his meltdowns online. Yeah. Um, and I forget exactly what kind of verbiage she was using, but I know it made me feel like she wasn't being, um, I don't know. She wasn't being like very- to him. Yeah. And it was kind of like, you know. Okay, I, are you done? Are you done yet? Right. Just wasn't very caring. Right. Are you finished? Are, are you done yeah. yet? We gotta go. Yeah. Um, I I just don't know. I think that's a very um, odd way to respond to that sort of thing. So it, it's not what I would have done. Closing thoughts. Well, closing thoughts. I know that um, Alex is not the only person who is um, doing a video about this, right? Right. And there's there are, so many. Right. So a lot of people are giving their opinions, opinions about this. Mm -hmm. uh, the opinions that we are giving are our own opinions. Everybody has their own opinion and they're entitled to their opinion. A part of the video funds from this video, I am going to donate to Holt and Adoption okay. Agency. Okay. The Holt Adoption Agency is the agency that um, I went through to adopt Alex and we still give money to them. Um, and I sponsor a child in China. Okay, so I think that's about it for this video. I know this was kind of rambly, um, but I just wanted it to be more like raw and stuff. So if you guys enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Let us know your thoughts down below of this whole situation. I love reading your comments and everything. Again, I will link down below um, a good resource so you can also learn more about the story. And I will also link down below where you can donate to help other um, kids in China and other countries. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Bye.